Hi, I'm Knut. I'm a DevRel at Sanity.io. I, like many others, are now currently working from home because we are in the midst of a global pandemic with the coronavirus. When you have a population that has to be home and practice social distancing, you have like a whole set of new challenges coming. And many developers out there are now trying to solve some of those challenges with the skills they have. Uh, one of these efforts is takeouttracker.com, a website that lists all the restaurants in Austin, Texas that has takeout. And that's pretty useful if you want to order some food. So following is a, a chat with Corey Ward, the developer behind takeouttracker.com. So what he and his partner has done in less than a week is pretty impressive. Uh, so I wanted to learn more about how they actually did that. And no surprise, is it involved sanity in a way. So yeah, this is the chat. I hope you find it interesting and inspiring. You can go and download the source code for Takeout Tracker if you want to make your sort of own Takeout Tracker for your own local city. And if you do, please let us know so we can give you a free advanced plan uh, to run the project on. So with no further ado, here's the interview with Corey Ward. So uh, the, the basic introduction, um, my name is Corey Ward. I'm a freelance developer. Uh, I work for clients like Figma, Insanity, and others. And uh, I primarily work in service and marketing, um, though I also do some e-commerce stuff as well. Um, I've been working in this sphere for well over 10 years now. Um, most of that freelance, all of it client service. Um, so I'm very familiar with spinning up new sites, uh, and kind of happen to be very full stack and wear a lot of hats. Um, <clears throat> so we got the idea for a takeout tracker, um, God, I guess last, last week, Monday, um, we were, we were noticing there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of restaurants changing up what their policies were in light of the COVID, uh, coronavirus kind of health crisis. And we wanted to... Uh, do what we could to kind of help restaurants keep from closing. One of our favorite restaurants here laid off a bunch of people, uh, several of whom we're friends with, and that was kind of like a wake-up call for us. Um, us being myself and my fiance Fanny, who is my partner in this, and I could not have done it without her. And that is not just in the usual sort of a sense of like, uh, you know, supportive partner, but also in the sense of uh, she's responsible for uh, probably around 98.5% of all the content that's in the site, um, which has been a huge effort. Yep. Because how many restaurants do you actually have in in the index um, now? We checked earlier today, and I think it's somewhere around 550. Yeah, and yeah. that's like so, manual entries, right? Uh, and yes, yeah. The way that we're yeah. collecting the data is through a variety of sources. Initially, it was just, hey, what restaurants do we know of? Let's add them. Let's see what they're doing. Um, and the information that we're showing on the site, and we can look take a look at it in a minute here, includes their hours what their policies are during the crisis. So are they doing dine-in? Are they doing takeout? Um, very quickly, the city of Austin changed to not allow dine-in. So that was quickly kind of removed and we had to update 100 entries. Um, but like what kinds of takeout are they doing? Are they doing curbside? Are they available with uh, any of the popular delivery services? Uh, and then notes on specifically what they're doing. So some of the restaurants, it's like a hey, cashless only or, hey, you have to pay online or you need to order in advance two days in advance or it's a limited menu and everybody's hours are shifting and changing a lot. So we found uh, pretty quickly that Instagram uh, is kind of a, is king in terms of uh, where restaurants want to share this information with their customer base. So we would source from Instagram, sometimes a little bit of uh, uh, Facebook. Haven't really seen too many people using Twitter, but like we're looking at those places um, websites for these restaurants. A lot of them are not using Sanity. A lot of them are not even using a, a decent CMS where they can go in and, and add a message to their website. So we saw like a very delayed response for from restaurants for updating these things. Uh, but sometimes we are gathering information from there. And, um, you know, so initially those were really, it was, that was it. It's like third party sources. What can we glean? Uh, we do have some connections in the restaurant industry here uh, through friends and through some past work stuff, but, uh, you know, it's minimal. So most of, yeah, our information is coming from, you know, what can we gather on the internet, um, by Tuesday. So we did this Monday, um, just, you know, a big spike, like I think 11 56 PM local time on Monday, we pushed the first version live. We sent it out to some friends. Um, Monday we woke up and I think it was by like 
noon, I had checked the analytics and there were like a hundred people live on the site, according to Google. So I was like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, this blew up. By the end of the day, we had seen over 10,000 unique users uh, using the site. It had gotten on, you know, some local kind of smaller news channels and uh, a lot of other kind of publications. Just a lot of, you know, a lot of interest, a lot of people sharing it around on social media. I got tagged more times that day than I ever have in my life or probably ever will. Um, <laughs> it was madness. And we, you know, there's a lot of features uh, that we didn't have yet. A lot of restaurants we didn't have yet. I think we had originally launched maybe with uh, God, it might have been 50 restaurants, which felt very comprehensive. But when you really look at a city the size of Austin, nowhere near comprehensive, right? Um, so we had to kind of quickly operationalize uh, how are we in taking this information. We had dropped a chat widget on the site uh, from a company called Crisp. It was just like looked up <laughs> something that was free because I wasn't going to pay Intercom for it. And uh, we dropped that in there. And yeah, we got, I think it was 175-ish conversations that first day. Maddening. Um <laughs> So we had to, you know, figure out some stuff. We put together like a Google form and tried to try to kind of corral all the submissions that we were getting into, uh, you know, a smaller set of, of, you know, intake places and uh, just kind of went from there, building out additional features through the week and, and handling, you know, what we could. It, it almost <clears throat> sounds like you got yourself another day job. <laughs> like I got a what? Uh, another day job. Like it sounds kind of like a startup. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It feels totally like uh, a big launch uh, for, you know, that I might do with a client or something. Um, only it's more crazy because I'm handling design and the development. And, you know, in the same room, we're also doing the majority of the content. We don't have anybody else helping to steer or prioritize features or any of this. So, you know, it's been fun um, in a way. Um, and I'm very thankful that I have like the skill set and the experience to be able to do these things. And uh, for this to have been taken uh, to take off so quickly and to be so useful to have heard so many kind things or people uh, since we launched it, um, you know, it's, it's definitely went beyond our, uh, you know, our ambitions with creating it. You know, we really were like pretty used to, hey, let's go ahead and put this effort into this and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so this has definitely been the opposite. We're very thankful for that. We're very thankful that like, it's actually seeming to work. Uh, we've gotten, um, you know, we're working with Google to try to get maps in place and, um, the city has reached out a couple of different departments. We're trying to like share data and excuse me, they're working on initiatives to, to help, help with the whole situation with where people can park during pickups. And, um, it, so it's, it's been great it, seeing the community come together and being a part of that has really been, uh, you know very rewarding and fulfilling it's it's interesting because like a side of this crisis is that we have all these not necessarily new but more pressing needs like information that we need uh that hasn't really been structured properly uh restaurant websites they are as you as you said it's like they are either like outdated pretty bad it's like just a pdf uh <laughs> somewhere uh, and it seems like restaurants have tended to use Facebook and Instagram. And those are not always easy to get to unless you are looking for the restaurant, the specific restaurant. So it's it's kind of obvious that this thing should be popular, but it's also interesting that it wasn't there before. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think Google generally does a pretty good yeah. job with their uh, with their maps and places. And, you know, I've contributed a lot on that over the years. Um, even for major businesses, you find like uh, Apple recently here, like a couple of years ago, moved their one of their stores. Um, and it's like within the same kind of general area, um, you know, but it's a couple blocks over. And the new addresses were, were new roads. And it, so there were some issues of going in there and being able to adjust the, you know, hey, here's the new location. Here's where the door is and help people find it. You know, so, I, you know, being able to do those sorts of things for like large local businesses even is like, it's pretty cool. And, and, you know, they rely a lot on those community submissions. Unfortunately, the speed that that kind of thing moves is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. And the big thing that they don't have is confirmation. You know, when, when did the last, when was the last time that these numbers were, were accurate. We generally think, okay, Google's probably pretty close on the hours. If they changed recently, like in the last week, maybe not. But most restaurants aren't doing that. They know it's bad for business, right? 
Um, in a moment like this, though, I mean, these things change. I mean, literally, we've seen a couple of restaurants where it's like they announce what they're doing earlier in the day. And then by that night, they announce, hey, we're closing. Mm -hmm. Or restaurants are like, hey, we're just going to close. And then they realize, wait, we can do something. And then they come open and, uh, you know, menus change, policies change, services change. We've seen, uh, we've seen both DoorDash and Favor really push hard to uh, sign on a lot of new businesses. Um, both being like delivery services um, and a lot of them like waiving fees for restaurants to participate in like their premium offerings where they get like discounted deliveries in these things. Um, so trying to keep up on top of all that information. Yeah, it's it's definitely not something I would want to do full time, <laughs> you know, all, all year round. Um, ideally, it, it's, you know, can kind of level out and normalize a bit. But yeah, right now, um, something that can respond quickly is, is definitely needed. It, but yeah. Uh, um... What I like noticed first about this thing was the domain name, takeouttracker.com. I was like, I can't believe that that wasn't like a thing already. But you didn't buy that now, did you? I did. You didn't. Yeah, okay. So, so you didn't like have the foresight like years back and just like, <laughs> but yeah, again, it's like. <laughs> yeah, no, we um, we uh, were, we were talking about the, you know, options for the name. And we didn't really know what to call it. Um, as obvious as takeout tracker is in hindsight, it was not at the time. Um, it was just, you know, wanting to rush, list restaurants, you know, it's like maybe say something about coronavirus. I don't know. Um, and thought about maybe just spinning it up on a subdomain of like my personal domain. Um, and, you know, it's like, well, I don't know what else is available and kind of just started talking back and forth. And, you know, I was like, I don't know, it's tracking restaurant food tracker or no food you know this that and the other I don't, and it's like takeout tracker it's like i don't know it's generic and i yeah i happened to punch it into google domains and it was available every single uh tld <laughs> sometimes you just get lucky yeah i guess so um should it actually take a look at what you made yeah yeah let me see if i can share right this has evolved quite a bit since uh, it was first launched. Uh, yeah, as things do. Um, yeah, we started out without any sort of real branding. Um, you know, there was no logo. There was not even really a header. We didn't have links to uh, to a lot of things, but uh, we kind of quickly iterated on things. Uh, and a lot of the, the, the styles that you see here are, are even newer. Um, I think that Actually, the kind of slightly blue, dark mode theme came uh, the second day. <laughs> um, so yeah, things kind of iterated very quickly, and you know, we just we started kind of adding some of the things you come to expect from a website to make it look like a website. Heroes and you know sections and and whatnot uh, came later. Yeah, because uh, when it first launched, it was like this just this list you see here, you see here of, uh, of restaurants. But now you have, like, it seems, categories and you have search and filtering. And even like yeah, um, and grid mode or and whatever. There's still a lot, lot more than we'd like to do from there. Um, and we're working on maps. Um, yeah, we have two different ways you can view the information. Um, so kind of interesting as we started adding more restaurants and started kind of breaking uh say like 250 uh we started noticing some performance drop off uh we're using gatsby which is super fast um but it's it, and it's react which is also very fast um however Re react really doesn't like to have to re-render you know 300 or 400 functional components simultaneously and so uh trying to do something that would really switch a lot of that information out excuse me, especially very quickly, would start to uh, introduce problems. Uh, like we'd have a lot of lag just between them. Uh, we would also notice there were some sort of visual rendering bugs associated with it, uh, especially on mobile or other devices that maybe didn't have as much memory. Uh, so yeah, we had to kind of cut the amount of information and, and show these shorter cards and only show the full information on click. Um, <clears throat> later, uh, once we added search here, I was able to add pagination. Uh, we didn't want to add pagination prior to uh, having search because it would also prevent you from using like the command F find in your browser. Mm, makes sense. So you had like scaling issues like yeah, a week in, <laughs> it sounds like. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think that was maybe like day three. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. re it's really cool. Uh, it's like a miniature. Again, it feels very much like startup, like a product. It is a product, but it, it's like super compressed. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, absolutely is. Um, it's just, I mean, it's lacking monetization, but I think so do a lot of startups nowadays. So, um, in a lot of a lot of uh, senses, maybe we should have uh, <laughs> requested some funding. But uh, do you see this like uh, expanding to to other cities uh, as well? So this is something that we've you know, we've heard a lot from people, and we've. Uh, we've thought a lot about we'd love to you know make this available for everywhere um right out of the gate uh we made the decision that yeah this should totally just be open source it's the spirit of it um i have done a rather poor job of documenting uh how other people can take these these two repositories and set them up in other cities um but uh I think also the majority of the work is going to be in the content curation. And we've talked to people in a lot of other cities like Los Angeles or San Diego, Denver, New York about it. And honestly, I mean, we, we probably put in over a hundred hours in content curation right now, uh, like so far. Uh, and that's, that's going to be, that's in a city the size of Austin, which Metro area, I think is probably around 3 million, maybe a little less. Um, <laughs> It's it's a lot. Um, so for larger cities, especially, it's going to be even more challenging. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, it's open source. We'd love to be able to accept all those restaurants in here. We don't have the time ourselves, the two of us, and like the volunteers that we have here and there, uh, to manage all the content for other cities. So uh, that's one hurdle. Uh, we would need somebody to manage content in these other cities. Um, two, right now we don't have any sort of geolocation data, and we don't have a map. So we would need to either like tie things to a city or we would need to add that sort of information just to, I mean, to be able to expand, you know, just beyond right here. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it, it's a bit of a, a, a sort of cart before the horse sort of a thing there. Um, once we get the maps in place, we'll be better suited to onboard like other cities, but we still do need content managers there. Um, this is, this is a, you know, hopefully a temporary crisis, uh, something that, you know, might last six weeks, eight weeks. And, um, if that's the case, you know, this is a, a sort of a, you know, the, all the time we put into this is, is useful now and, and the value of that work, the time it can actually be useful to people gets shorter and shorter and shorter, the later that work goes in, uh, with that, I don't know, I, I guess I'm, I'm, skeptical that somebody else in another city will actually say, Hey, yes, I'll put two or three weeks of work into this content to get this up for a month. Um, which I understand, but, um, but yeah, right now we're open to somebody else taking the code and running with it and doing that. Happy to like list somebody else as a subdomain doing a <laughs> Craigslist style. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, if we can, you know, we'd also be happy to, to get them onboarded, uh, within our, our instance here. Yeah, I feel I should mention that if people want to make their own instance, uh, Sanity will uh, sponsor that project um, with a beefy plan. <laughs> uh, so get in touch if you actually sure. want to do this. But it also seems to me that this is a also a good pattern for all sorts of like information index websites. Yeah, we were talking about this this morning, actually, um, my fiance and I, um, she's heard from a number of other like small grocers or uh, pet food stores or these sorts of things. And we don't really have a way of serving them in here. Um, this started out as like, you know, let's see if we can really focus on it and help people in the service industry. They're being hit very hard. Um, but obviously, yeah, there are a lot of other um, sometimes adjacent type of businesses um, that, you know, we kind of are like, hmm, maybe we should list them. And then there are a lot of other businesses too. It would just be really useful uh, to, to be able to list and direct people towards. So um, we're actually considering spinning up uh, our own uh, sort of a fork of the, the front end application here on a subdomain to really do that, to address that, just changing some of the language and adding another type to the existing sanity uh, studio that we have uh, just called like business um, and giving it its own fields. Cause right now, you know, things are very, 
very restaurant specific. Um, not everything is, so we keep some of those things the same, you know, just keep the same field. And then we just adjust in the front end code, uh, you know, how, how those cards are presented. But um, so, yeah, that's certainly a possibility even for us. And I could totally see other people doing the same. Maybe this is a good segue to actually look into the studio and how that turn, turned out. Yeah, uh, let me pull that up. Um, so we, we have a relatively bare bones setup here, not too much going on in the, uh, the sort of dashboard department. Um, kind of kind of well, I guess walk you through kind of what we've got uh, so our the, the, the root of our desk um, we started out with I think it was literally just restaurants and nothing else um, restaurants are kind of what you'd expect right we have uh, you know every one of the restaurants in here we have some custom sort orders that allow us to uh, kind of check out what's been recently updated if we want to you know put together you know lists or publish anything on our Instagram to let people know um, and we can also do the opposite to know, hey, who hasn't been updated in a while? So it looks like Brutorium is, uh, you know, we're, we're operating in information that's about 10 days old for them. Um, we've kept track of the sources for every one of uh, our restaurants, like where we're finding the information, which is really useful for us to be able to kind of go back and confirm things, let our users know that's public on the website. Um, but yeah, so we can, you know, maybe come in here and, and update uh, each restaurant has a couple of, you know, check boxes. You know, we're, we want to know if a restaurant is closed and still list them because that's useful information for the user. Um, we also found like a lot of users were reporting that they found, uh, restaurants that were, um, you know, were open that we didn't have listed and we were either like swamped with other requests and didn't have time to just go do that, digging that, that research to make sure that that information is valid. Um, and or we needed more information that the user didn't have, such as like their hours or what they were offering. Um, and so we wanted to be able to like list those restaurants in here and just say, hey, they're, you know, users are saying that this place is open. We don't have any other information, but there it is. And originally we listed them separately, but then we've since folded them in and, and made sure that those cards are uh, reflective of that information. So, uh, so yeah, we have this user reported information kind of toggle. Um, and then otherwise, most of our information is broken down into these these four kind of category field sets of the general information, uh, just, you know, the website name, these sorts of things, uh, the sources, and then we have like the operating policies, which is where most of the information is, uh, our hours, takeout stuff. Um, ordering information is where we just kind of link to phone numbers, have any other notes for who to contact or what to do when you show up. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. We also have references to what we use in here is called contact person. Um, if we have uh, a connection, somebody submits this, a restaurant owner submits this form for us, uh, we want to collect their contact information so that we're able to reach back out to them in the future, in like the coming days, weeks to say, hey, uh, is this information still current? So like if I had a contact person here for a brutorium, uh, we would be able to send them an email or a text message and, and you know, say, hey, we haven't seen an update from you for 10 days. Uh, you know, first case, first step, I'm going to look on their Instagram, uh, you know, see if they've updated anything. But um, having this information also will allow us to potentially automate some of this in the future, reaching out to restaurants to ask, you know, what's going on, potentially presenting them with a, uh, you know, a dashboard where they can update information for us to review and confirm um, all within Sanity. Um, we also want to do that early on, submitting the form directly into Sanity and putting the document in a like pending review state. Um, it just uh, wasn't wasn't in the cards for development. It was just too much too much work for us to to kind of prioritize, and we went with the Google form. But um, you know, were this something that we're going to go on longer? Were we really thinking about this as a startup, as something that lasts for longer? I absolutely think that's something we would have invested in. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Otherwise, though, we, we since since having restaurants, we started adding some other like sub lists here. Um, these are still just restaurants, but we filter them in different ways. This just gives us kind of quick ways to look for specific information. So if we go under here, say needs tags, we can see that there are a lot of restaurants that uh, mostly these are closed restaurants. Might be useful to filter those out, but we can find a lot of restaurants that that don't actually have tags, and we can kind of go in and, and know you know who to start you know tagging where we can enhance information versus just adding new restaurants. Um, <clears throat> we also presented you know this other new way of 
flagging restaurants as out, outdated and needing confirmation, who's closed, this sort of information. So, so this is using a uh, structure builder, I guess. Yeah, that's correct. So so that's yeah. yeah, and it's pretty pretty straightforward right now. Yeah. It's not using any of the new fancy <laughs> uh, observers or anything where we're able to, to kind of update based on you know it'd be nice to be able to like say configure uh, what is considered outdated um, from within sanity, but we haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, otherwise you know we've we've since added pages. Um, so the home page is actually just a generated page. And we can generate more, but right now we haven't. Um, but we're, you know, everything from the slug to the uh, content of the page is all set within here. Uh, right now we have three different content blocks. We have a hero, it's obvious, the restaurants viewer, and uh, like a, a list cloud, so to speak. Um, so just looking back at the website. So heroes up here. This, this is the list cloud. So these are kind of curated lists. And uh, this section is, uh, is a list of lists, so <laughs> to speak. Um, so we're just calling that a list cloud for now. And then the, the restaurants viewer. Um, and each of these has some, some things you're able to configure. So uh, the list cloud, for example, just has the actual the, it ordered list of those lists. <laughs> and uh, our restaurant viewer allows us to uh, configure some of the default filters and whatnot. And, and with the default, what the default view mode is. Um, so this is, we think, going to come in handy if we want to start presenting uh, the the viewer in uh, in different ways, um, especially as we add new filters down the line. So we could say create a whole page of uh, restaurants that you can get delivered via DoorDash and link directly to that from another source. And uh, we'd be able to say like, great, this is showing all restaurants, not ones that are closed, and uh, you know only those that are being uh or that are offering DoorDash. Cool. So yeah, that's I mean, I think that's the the majority of the of our our, our sanity instance. Nothing too complicated. Um a pretty straightforward setup. One thing that we we <laughs> used here, this is the first time I've used it, is this unsplash source. Um this made it really, really fast and easy to get images for every one of our um our lists so super appreciative of whoever built that out that was us <laughs> it was one oh, of was the it? example plugins for when we launched the custom asset source sources so uh, because i wanted this forever because i'm, I'm doing most of the blog posts <laughs> at sanity yeah <laughs> so and i'm always going to unsplash to copy paste something uh mm-hmm so it's pretty neat. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's really nice not to have to go f go find it, download it, re-upload it, and then later go back through and find four hundred twenty-five megabyte images from Unsplash in your downloads folder. Actually, <laughs> my my favorite feature I think um, uh, in the Sanity Studio is actually that you can copy paste images. Uh, right from the web mm -hmm. browser. So if you copy an image in the web browser, you can just uh, command V it right into the image uh, field. Uh, but uh, I've I've used that a bunch. <laughs> so no downloads necessary. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. That's true. I think I guess uh, I, I wasn't aware that when you copied from Unsplash, you got the full size image. Uh, you may be right. Uh, I mean. Yeah. I guess it depends. If you don't really need that full res, then a lot of them are, are excessive. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially for a small blog post image or something, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a handy feature. Very appreciative of that. So yeah, uh, I wondered a bit like uh, how d did you do uh, do a CSS framework or anything for for the front end? Because it looks like very consistent and neat. Um, so we I used Figma to design um, everything before I built it for the most part. Um, now that the, the sort of design language is relatively established, I've started to kind of do a little bit more design in the browser. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a loosey-goosey one because it's not a client project and because it is just for free and I'm just one person and, you know, ultimately have to weigh the value uh, that design brings 
against the the value that you know comes from actually having the feature available. Mm. Uh, so in a lot of cases, you know, I, like I think upfront Monday last Monday, um, I probably overinvested in design. Um, I used the Iconify plugin in Figma to pull icons for a lot of the data that we see like on those cards, uh, like a little clock icon, mm. a little check mark icon, a little car icon. Um, which I think helps the information not just feel like a big blob. Mm. Um, I had originally, like, we built out Sanity so we could start adding content. And we were adding content, and so I was able to then start fetching it, but then you just have this mess of stuff on the page. Um, It's like, how do I present this? So I hopped over into Figma, and that's when I started organizing that information, Mm. thinking about how to present it, pulling in icons. Uh, So I probably spent, you know, uh, half the time designing and then moved over into code and started to build it. And because... We didn't know how this was going to go. I wanted to just, you know, uh, make up for some of that lost time in design by just moving fast in the development. And so I, I borrowed some sort of patterns that I've used in the past for defining some some basic tokens. Um, you know, like I use a CSS normalize. That's the only third party CSS I'm using. I don't have like a, I don't, I prefer not to use like a, an old school bootstrap grid or anything. Um, and you know, some, some handy kind of functions and stuff just to start building it out. Um, but like a lot of it was just hard coded in the, the home page. We didn't have a page builder insanity or anything. The content like text was all just hard coded into the site. The only thing we were pulling from sanity was restaurants. And, um, you know, so a lot of the styles for like every single heading, uh, were a little bit different. And so those were just values were just copied mostly from Figma's direct, you know, Figma code panel oh, yeah. style right there. <laughs> um, I'm using emotion for CSS. So it's really nice because, you know, your styles are right there adjacent with the component. You're not having to define them separately. Um, and <clears throat> as a result, yeah, we just, it kind of went from there. Um, I've done this enough and for high profile enough clients that like I'm pretty used to, yeah, we need to make things look consistent, have a good, you know, sense of uh, balance with the colors and scale and, and spacing and stuff. And, um, you know, this was still just a very quick stab. Uh, I definitely don't intend for takeout tracker to be like any sort of design epitome. But um, but yeah, so I did did that. And it's just been kind of like iterating on that. Um, I was very lucky to connect with a designer, uh, Gavin. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his last name at the moment. Um, but uh, I think I, uh, yeah, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> you can look him up. Uh, I connected with him with in the Sanity Community Slack channel. Mm. Um, he was a designer offering, you know, if anybody needed help. Mm. And so he actually designed this little kind of lunch bag icon that we're using uh, as our logo and the fave icon now. Uh, so very appreciative for that. Um and he helped also design like a filters panel that we have yet to implement, um, but hoping to get that up sometime soon as well. Um, but yeah, so as far as the, the the CSS framework, yeah, that's that. There's there isn't one. Uh, we have a few kind of uh, styles that have been uh, normalized. We're importing, you know, a bit, but otherwise, it's it's pretty pretty loosey goosey. I guess in in like five years, uh, like the corporation TakeoutTracker.com can uh, can publish their own style design system. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be onto something <laughs> beyond design systems then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's next? Hum- After design- humans will not be allowed to design the system. It will be yeah. <laughs> AI and. <laughs> um, so at config, uh, the community. Um, the, the, the user conference put on by Figma a couple of months ago, there were several companies that did uh, effectively design linters it, as like Figma plugins. And that was really fascinating yeah. to see. Uh, like Uber was one of them. And it was really cool to see how uh, when a designer is kind of finished with a design, they can run this and see if any of their colors were misapplied. For example, if they used a color that was intended for text as a background. <laughs> um, and it was really fascinating just to see a design system being applied at that resolution. And, um, still being practical as developers, I think we're a little bit more, uh, I, I guess, predisposed to thinking like that. And in design, you don't really necessarily think of it that way. You know, a color is a color, you just use it. Um, so tools like that really start to help in, introduce those sorts of things. I'm really big on this. Uh, I think it's great. I do wish I had a design system for takeout tracker. And if somebody watching this is, uh, experience with this sort of thing and, and wants to uh, 
tinker for a few hours, I would absolutely welcome their input. Uh, I could potentially do it, but come on, I don't have that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, um, regarding like the, the sign linter thing, it isn't that long ago I can remember developers within the same company having arguments about like, should we use tabs or spaces? But now it seems it's like, just pick a linter. I'll go with that. <laughs> it's like people are bored um, from those arguments. Uh, but yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we have better stuff to argue about. Uh, so before, yeah. I, before I started doing Gatsby apps, um, I was working a lot with Ruby and Rails. And, you know, that's a community where... Conventions, I think, have a special place mm. and are accepted and welcomed. And, you know, it's not at the expense of individual sort of expression and preferences. Um, you know, you certainly can still do your own thing, but it's one of these areas where it's like, hey, if we can come together, we can do a lot more than if we are all insisting on doing things ourselves, which is an ethos that I think matches with open source community. Um, and I mean, honestly, just the internet, uh, if we're connecting with one another, why do we have such an intense sort of desire to, to remain isolated and individual, you know, the whole point is for us to, to be able to do things together and to do things together. We need shared language. We need to, uh, you know, we need to agree on things and move forward with things. So, uh, when I switched over to doing JavaScript more, uh, seriously, I guess, cause I mean, I've been doing JavaScript since. I was probably 14 years old. Uh, but JavaScript now is very different from JavaScript then, thank God. Uh, and, you know, starting to use, like, some of these newer tools that are being used, ESLint and Prettier, it's like a godsend, you know. ESLint can certainly be misconfigured and, and, and turn into, uh, you know, <laughs> go into, uh, you know, wars. Yeah. But, uh, yes, I yeah, do Prettier want the console fantastic. log. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially in development. Um, but yeah, Prettier, I think, is, is a great example of a tool that mm. was able to choose the right balance of things and provide so much value that it it's kind of seen universal adoption, right? Um, and now it's like, eh, even in the instances where it formats a thing, I don't really love how it's doing it. Oh, well, just move on. It's so useful to not have to uh meticulously space out my code i mean I, I still i mean i definitely remember doing it i'm still writing rails applications um you know maintaining ones i've built and and occasionally you know spinning up new ones and man i if every time i you know i i spin up a rails app i swear to god i go look for hey what's the ruby <laughs> version of prettier um there are a couple of them out there now but they're still not mature enough and they haven't managed to pick that that perfect sort of uh you know set of styles to sort of apply mm. so they're not providing enough value that people are really using them and they're, they're you know it's kind of hard to reach that critical mass right but uh but yeah so gotta love uh gotta love prettier <laughs> yeah i'm not sure how to 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 go from prettier back to take a tracker and like the overall uh ethos of this this video but um uh, you said something about the internet and how it can uh, make people come together to make useful things for people. Yeah, cool. So appreciate you taking the time to tell us about takeatracker.com. Um, people should check it out. People should check out the source code and keep in mind that this is like you're almost two weeks in or something. Not even. Not even. It's like the second no, week. Right? It's nine days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, it's yeah. If anybody's uh, you know interested in spinning this up in other cities, or um, if anybody else is just thinks this is cool and wants to contribute, I I mean, especially people who are familiar with Sanity, that would be so great. Um, you know, we're working on getting a map in there right now, and you know, like I said, you know, Google has been in touch and has given us a, a rather generous uh, API credit, like, you know, to, to be able to use their APIs to do this. But we still need to have addresses for each of the businesses in there and have multiple locations. So there are things we're working on there. Um, and, you know, then on the front end, you know, being able to implement a map in a, in a way that matches what 
established startups like Yelp are doing, mm. um, where we have a map on one side and listings on another and pagination and filters is a lot of work. Um, so would, would definitely appreciate some, some help on that front. Yeah. Uh, so, so if people want to help out, where can they find you on, on the internet? Um, my name is Corey Ward. And if you search for me, that's my handle just about everywhere. Google me. <laughs> um, so Twitter is probably the best place if you just want to reach out. Uh, if you want to work with me on some code stuff, uh, specifically like tra- takeout tracker, that's all on my personal GitHub right now. Um, so I'm also adding um, links to the, the repository from the takeouttracker.com website because uh, those are, uh, <laughs> are still not there. Uh, <laughs> just haven't been deprioritized. Um, so we'll have links to that in the footer of the site, hopefully later today. So, um, depending when this goes out, they'll probably be there and, uh, yeah, you're welcome to go in there, uh, you know, clone it, check out what's, what's going on. Uh, if you have any, any problems, any questions, reach out to me on Twitter. And, uh, if you just want to follow what's going on with takeout tracker, uh, we're on Instagram just at, at takeout tracker. Yeah, and we will add those links to the video description uh, as well. Uh, cool. That would be a very kind thing to do. Yeah. Again, thank you for for doing this, uh, and we look forward to see what happens. What's uh, what's next for Take Tracker Maps? Yeah. Well, yeah. we're just hopeful that uh, it becomes irrelevant sooner than later, mm-hmm. um, and you know everything kind of get back to normal. But for now, yeah, go order some takeout if you can, depending where you are. Support some local businesses. Be kind. You know, everybody's trying.